for me. It reminds me of my response to my favorite teacher, Mr. Callio, in sixth grade. Now, this man was an amazing teacher who knew how to meet students where they were in his learning style. Not to mention, he was kind of cute to look at. So I sat in the front row a lot, and I raised my hand a lot, just saying. In fact, he was one of those teachers that my mom didn't have a problem going to the conferences to visit with. <laughs> There was a time for us that he was teaching us in U.S. geography about all of the states and their capitals, and he was going to test us on our memorization of that. So he showed us this way to memorize all of them, and he said, this is how I'm going to present the test to you. So I studied super hard, and I memorized the order and the lineup that he gave us, and I prepared myself to go home and give this beautiful speech to my parents of how I got an A, and I was so proud of myself. Well, test day came and I knew the order, and I could picture how the test was going to be laid out for us, but Mr. Callio messed with us. I remember opening the folder and saying, no, this is not the right way. This is not how you trained us to prepare for this test. And in my stress and irritation, I ended up getting a B on the test. And Mr. Callio got a 12-year-old temper tantrum of slander and doubt and frustration. Let's just say that hell, hell hath no fury as a teenage girl who's been cheated of an A on a test. And all the while, Mr. Callio sat there calm and silent. And when I was done throwing my tantrum, he patiently said to me, Sonia, you know the information. You were so caught up in the order and the presentation of the test that you forgot to put the knowledge to work. Oh, Mr. Callio, you're wise, you're good looking, and you're right. I knew the information, I knew every state and its capital, but I was following this set of rules that I had going around in my head that I thought would get me to my A. I, like the Pharisees and John the Baptist, came to Mr. Callio with my guns firing. I knew the rules, I knew the plan, and yet I didn't. Nor did John or the Pharisees. They thought they knew Jesus' plans and the rules of this thing that we call religion, but they didn't at least not from John's pers or Jesus' perspective. And isn't that just like us most of the days of our lives? At least that sounds like me when things aren't going my way or falling into my life plan. I fight and I rationalize my thoughts and my actions just like my three-year-old son did so many years ago when he kicked a little boy at church for stealing his shovel. And Pastor Larson, who witnessed all of this, took my son aside and he said, Philip, was that the right thing to do? Do you think Jesus would have kicked this little boy? And my son said boldly, no, but Judas would have. <laughs> he took the WWJD slogan to a new level. <laughs> and he justified his actions and his thought process. And I'm so grateful that none of us do that. Amen. We never act like the Pharisees, and yet, we do when we think the world's rules, our rules, our ideas and plans are better than his plans and when he's messing with us. And then all of a sudden we become critical, slanderous, manipulative, and angry with God because he's not playing by our rules and we get stuck in the stink hole. And not only do we expect God to follow by our rules, but we expect everyone else to as well. So what are the rules? Well, you have to look like me. You have to act like me. You have to do this, but not that. You have to vote this way, but not that way. You have to believe what I believe, and you only play by the Minnesota rules. You have to like my status, my post, my point of view, or you break the rules. And that gives me permission to slander and judge and ridicule and blame you. Not myself, this is on you. And how's that working for us? Gee, I don't know. Are we living in wars? Political, social, economical, or physical? Every day, every day, friends, the news leading stories are of mass shootings, hate crimes, and domestic abuse. Not to mention depression and bullying and teen suicide is an all-time high. Division in this world is at the highest. Our choice of response to this world, that's God calling us, <laughs> saying, are you listening to this? <laughs> Our response to this world is not okay, 
But Jesus' response to the stories 2,000 years ago and yet today is peace, the true character of God's heart. It's peace and it's shalom. John 14, 27 reads, Peace I leave with you and peace I give you. And he shares it daily with you and I, with John the Baptist, with his disciples, with the Pharisees, and all of the crowds. He shares it through reason and correction so we can understand his ways, which are not always easy and not often accepted. And he shares it through kindness and love. And isn't that hard at times, to be kind and loving fully to everyone as our neighbors, even though they, we might not always enjoy them or respect them or value them? But Jesus loved and showed kindness, even when he was grieving and when he was rejected. 